Yes, it's the holidays. Hope you enjoyed the little cartoons that I presented. I uh, wanted to kind of introduce some of the, the the things that we have going on in our society today that is adding to our stress. I've had a lot of stressors in the last two years. And it was kind of one of the major reasons why I, I started writing the book, Trauma Bombs, and why I really started looking at my own life and trying to figure out how in the world can I get to feel better when all of this crap is going on in my life. Some of it was normal stuff. Some of it not so normal. We all have periods of time when we have more stressors and more traumas and more crap happen. That's just life. You know, it, I'm going to show a slide here in a minute of a, a study that was done that shows that in the last 30 years, since the early 80s, I think it was maybe 83 when they first started it. They did a survey 83, I think, or mid 80s, 2006, 2009. And they found out that across the board, stress has increased in all demographic categories 10 to 30 percent. That's a lot, folks. And then the comments on it was that. You know, the, the major thing that is the stressor is that we just can't shut down anymore. We've always got a gadget in our hands and we're playing with it. We've got media bombardment. We're sitting at computers all day long. We're hearing bad news left and right. There are people arguing about things, about all kinds of issues that are plaguing us and the economy is not that great. There are pockets that are okay, but the middle class is disappearing. And one of the largest stressors in some of the other studies that they've done recently in the United States, and it's probably worldwide, or at least in the modernized countries, is financial matters. And since 2008, financial matters have not been too hot here in the United States. And they seem to be getting worse all the time. The only contrast, um, life years ago, around the holidays, it was a different thing. It wasn't commercialized. It used to be, I can remember in my lifetime, you didn't see Christmas stuff coming out and being in the stores until about Thanksgiving, maybe. Now that you've got Halloween pumpkins and skeletons next to Christmas trees. Yeah, retailers, we know that you got to make a living. Because the Internet's tapping in and pushing in on your profits. And you're trying to keep your doors open. But just little stuff like that, it, it, it adds irritants to us. And the best way to deal with it is to go back and to look at our major traumas, the major episodes in our lives, and clean out all the garbage and get rid of it so that we can face each day fresh and new and meet those challenges of that day and not carry on that baggage and not have those weaknesses and those chinks and those holes in our armor whenever something does hit us. Those of us that have past traumas, we got big old gaping holes in our armor. And when something comes in and hits us, it hits us hard and it hits us deep and it hits us fast. And on the life stress test, one it's at the bottom of the list, but it's still there, and because it made the list, it's important. Major holidays. 
one of the largest periods of depression is major holidays. You know, our families have gotten smaller. Our connections have gotten more fragmented. We have far and far less familial family support than ever before in the history of the world. We used to live in clans where we had multiple families living together. And since the industrialized age and particularly after World War II, more single family homes built, more single family homes built. It used to be the big house with multiple bedrooms and multi-generations lived there. So when someone was down on their luck, there was somebody else that was working in that household. Someone else bringing in some money. Maybe it was a farm community and you're, you know, if you were on a farm, you always had work. But if you grew stuff, you could eat. If you could go hunting, you could go eat. We've moved away from the rural communities. We've congregated more in cities. And we've relied more and more on time-saving devices and gadgets instead of knowing how to do stuff for ourselves. And that's what people did back then. They knew how to make their presence for one another. And they were happy with it. They made the decorations for their trees. And they liked it. They could sit back and relax and not be bombarded and actually hear the clock on the wall tick. When was the last time you heard a clock on the wall tick? That it was that quiet and that calming to sit in a rocking chair and to hear a clock tick. We don't slow down. We don't turn off. We don't unplug. We've got to be constantly moving, going, 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 going. It's not good for us. And if we can find the time during this holiday season to shut down a little bit, to do something calming and relaxing for just us. That's one of the best ways to get through the holiday. Yeah, it's good to get involved with family. But a lot of us don't have family to go to. And if you know somebody, do you know anybody in your neighborhood anymore? Not many, do you? If you know somebody down your street that's living alone, an older man, woman, couple, that family's moved away or they've lost a spouse, it doesn't take money. It just takes your time. It just takes your effort. Maybe that's what you need to do to have the holiday spirit again. Give a little bit to somebody else. All kinds of things that we can do to decrease our stress and decrease our bluntest way to say it and the best way to say it. Decrease our selfishness. Because ultimately, a factor in being depressed during the holidays. That's really us feeling sorry about ourselves, sorry for ourselves. We didn't get the present we want. Nobody appreciates us. I'm lonely. We feel those things because of what has happened to us in the past. If some of those things hadn't happened to us in the past, then it's much easier for us to get into the happy holiday spirit. Are you a Scrooge? 
a Grinch. Think about it. Watch this clip and we'll be back with you later on after to talk about some more differences between the way things were when they when our world was less stressful and the way they are, things are today. We'll be back in a minute. You caught me. Um, I'm getting ready for Christmas. You know, it's it's time to wear red. Yeah, it, it, it. Oh, you know, talking about the way stress has changed over the years. You know, since 1980s, yeah, a lot of things have changed. Just think about it. Those of you who are old enough to remember, we lived in a different world. You know, like that, that study that you just saw the slides on talked about is that in the early 80s and in the 80s we didn't have the bombardment of all the media that we have now we could turn it off oh hell you know, there's a lot of things that have changed you know I started getting back into what's called traditional wet shaving in my other YouTube channel is the mad scientist of wet shaving and I got that name because a few years back I started experimenting with creating different shaving products for a traditional wet shaver. Now what's a traditional wet shaver? It's someone that uses equipment like this. I'm going to show you a little bit here. This is a vintage razor. It is a 1904 Gillette old style razor. It was one of the very first Gillette. It's called a double edged razor because there are two edges. And you know, it's a three piece razor you just take apart. There's the bottom cap, there's the top cap, and the blade. Y'all recognize what this blade is. That's an old way of doing things versus a new way of doing things. One of these gadgets. You know, one of these cartridges that's got, I don't know how many, five Gillette Fusion here. It's got like five blades on it. That doesn't give you a better shave. That's marketing and it's hype. 
If you want to really find out about it, go to my other channel. I talk about that a lot. This blade, you can get hundreds of blades like this in the market now. It used to be a little bit harder to find. You can't find them in the stores. You can order them online in various other places. Easily for 20 to 30 cents a piece. And this, I can easily get four to six shaves off of this. Probably about the same amount I get off of this. So is new better? No. New's not better. You know, you're thinking and you're going back the way things were, i say at the turn of the last century, 1904, 1914. You know, the average wage in 1914 was about $3,000 a year. But taxes were only about 3% at most. I looked up some statistics. 2014, the average salary in the United States, the average median taxable wage, was about $45,000. So, you know, quite a bit of multiple. The average tax rate, 31%. But the buying power has changed. You know, that's the average wage, but what you can buy for it, you know, doesn't compare. Now you think about Christmases in the past. Christmases in 1904. Most of the things people gave one another were handmade things. Things that, that they put love in and they worked on for a long time. You know, another thing that new is not particularly better. And some of you are going to argue with me on this point. But the average household size in 1914 was right at five people. The average household size in the United States in 2014 was somewhere in the mid 2.5, 2.6. Yeah, we all have houses, but can we afford them anymore? One of the biggest stresses that there is in the modern world today is finances, is money. You know, so we're finding ourselves, many, many people, having to combine households. Grandma and Grandpa, you know, not Grandma and Grandpa, Grandma and Grandpa were living in an era where they're a little bit better financially off than their kids and their grandkids so families are coming back together and people think oh that's terrible well no it's not really because the more people we have around us the better support we can have we think oh you know i'll have to share space and everything but you know, the, the, the major stressors that our young people have today is that in many ways they have too many choices. In many ways, there's too much freedom for them to make choices and they have a hard time doing it. You know, it used to be that things were a little bit more regimented and the, the expansive choices wasn't so great. So it was a little bit easier for them to make those transitions of life from being an adolescent to being a full-fledged adult. That's not any better. I'm getting ready to put on some aftershave. Lilac Vegetal. Now those are my wet shaving friends this this is an aftershave that is very very classic but not everybody likes it it's it's a very unique smell plastic bottle we're gonna throw this away when it's empty can't really reuse it this is a glass bottle use it over and over and over and over and over again it has the same integrity it's always going to have this is probably a, uh, maybe a 1980s vintage 
bottle and it's not super old it's not you know back in the 1915s but you know it's it's good stuff you know it's the same way the the soap that I used I used to puck a soap with a brush bore brush this brush cost a little bit less than 10 bucks this puck of soap cost probably about five bucks at most from where I get it even Nesterova nice pine scent very refreshing that's more much more efficient way to put lather and get a good shave than using this stuff this stuff costs a little over a buck, maybe buck and a half, maybe two bucks. But I will be using this puck of soap for months after this can has gone away. It's probably going to take at least six, probably at least six of these to replace this puck because it's a hard soap. Is new better? No, not always. And you know that's one of the things when we think about you know the old the old style of Christmas, the old style of the holidays. There, I'm saying it. I'm saying the evil word Christmas because we've demonized our religiousness in our holidays. You know, it, it's really kind of silly. Each of our religions can have our special celebrations. <coughs> but as a society, if we remove that ability to have those special, unique celebrations that can make us happy by enjoying them, then you know, are, is our society serving us? Or are we serving our society? Shouldn't it kind of be both directions? And that's part of the problem of the stress. You know, the, the Holmes, uh, I can't remember, Holmes Rias uh, life stress test. You can Google search just life stress test and do a, a, and get a list of questions to ask and you can calculate your stress level based upon the events that have occurred in the last two years of your life. I did. My score was 483. Yeah, what's that tell about me? Well, that tells me, well, let me back up a little bit. If you have a score under 150, that means that you've got relatively normal stress and you, it, your stress really shouldn't impact you too negatively. If you score between 150 and 300, then you've got medium stress and you've got a 50% chance based upon the statistics of this pre predictive test of having a major health breakdown in the next two years. And those that have 300 or more, that percentage rises to 80%. stress. Stress kills. Stress puts us in a position whereby we can't regulate our bodies and our emotions adequately. So trauma, how does that impact it? Well, because we've had traumas in our past that we haven't resolved and we haven't worked through, then we will be more vulnerable you know in, in, on this stress test you know what's on there you know what's a major stressor major holidays i think it was like 17 or 12 or something like that the highest rank thing was 100 points and that's death of a spouse and then right under it, like maybe 80, 90, something like that, was you know, divorce and separation and those type of things. Mm -hmm. 
but you know the 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 vulnerability that we have to stress is heightened if we haven't resolved those past traumas that are lurking and hidden and carried on with us in our lives. I've gone through and I've cleaned out a lot of my stuff, but I still have issues that I've got to deal with. That I still have weak points. I'm still not robust and strong enough. But then that's also part of life. I'm always going to have those struggles. We're always going to have those difficulties. But they do not have to be as strong, as damaging, as impactful, as unpleasant. If we take away the power of those past traumas so that when we do have stress in our lives, it could be normal stress, it could be advanced stress. The multiplication factor is reduced. So, how to manage your stress during this holidays? Take some time out and do something pleasant for yourself. If it's taking the time to take a slow, relaxing shave, go to the beauty parlor and get your hair done, get a nice haircut. I gotta do that. Get a pedicure, manicure, take a long bubble bath. Just sit out on your porch if it's nice weather and enjoy the environment. You know, one of the things we think about the life expectancy a hundred years ago was, you know, mid fifties. Life expectancy now is, you know, 70, mid seventies plus up to 80, I think for women, I think. And, you know, most of the deaths that occurred back then were because our medical technology wasn't as great. Well, because they had a lot more stress, I think they actually had a lot less stress. And I think, oh, they didn't have running water and they had outhouses and all, the, all these, those conveniences that we have doesn't make our life any better. It may make it less labor intensive, but it doesn't make it any better. You know, back even further, subsistence farmers, yeah, they had to work hard, but you know, they could always go out into the woods and hunt and they could grow stuff in their garden and they would have food for their family. Now we've got to work and make that money and to have a house, to have food, to have transportation, all those things that weren't nearly as big an issue 100 years ago, 200 years ago, as they are today. Our society has created more and more stress and it keeps on adding it year after year after year. So we've got to find ways to reduce it. And the best way to reduce it is to take away some of those trauma bombs that are in our past. So until next time, work real hard at being happy. Start working on some of those things that are in your past. Look at them. If they're a particular area of stress, try to examine them. If they're a particular traumatic period of your life, Start writing down the history. Not to change it right now, but just to write it down. But during the holiday season, definitely be safe. We'll talk with you later.